hey what's up guys welcome back to the channel this is Austin code cipher back again with a simple tutorial so in this video we are going to be looking at the bootstrap 4 model pop-ups so storing some additional information or forms inside a dialog box let's say when the user comes to your page and clicks on the button and you display such a message let's say agreement the contact us form on just a fly so when the user clicks the button such stuff is presented to him or her and has the close button and also the x so you can choose between the button and the x and you put some more extra information in this footer so we are having the header the body and the footer so you choose between the x or upper thumb times symbol and the close button on what to use and the format of the button is the new bootstrap outline buttons they introduced so to make this possible i'm going to be showing you how you can create this so behind the scenes i went and i removed all the codes so when i refresh this page we are going to be left with nothing and i'm going to be coding with you from scratch up to the last minute so on my left hand side i'm having a folder called tutorial and I'm going to upload this one to the Google Drive. So you're going to be able to download all these files. The CSS Bootstrap 4. And we are having Bootstrap, jQuery, and the popper. So all those pop-ups to work, you have to be having this popper.mini.js. So let's create a basic structure of an HT of a web page. That's it. I'm going to give it a title of model. So when I refresh, you should be able to see here model. So I'm going to be coding this with you from scratch. The first thing I'm going to do is to in include Bootstrap CSS in our web page. So Bootstrap CSS is inside this folder called CSS. CSS. Then you write the name of the file. So it's bootstrap.mini.css. So that's the only stuff we need in the head section. And the reason why we are going to include in, include sorry include JS at the bottom is to allow our page to fast load quickly before loading this or loading some HTML stuff content before running to these free files. So I guess you have ever had that reason. So let's include this. And when you're including these jQuery files, sorry, these JavaScript files, always make sure you start with the jQuery, because this is where all the source they get their commands from or functions. So we are going to include jQuery first. Then secondly, we include the popper script. Wow. Sweet. So let's remove this. It's useless for now. So inside the folder JS, I'm having popper dot mini dot JS, and lastly, you include the bootstrap file for JS bootstrap dot mini js so when you are handling such stuff that's how you have to arrange them jquery first pop a second and bootstrap dot mini dot js lastly so this is the folder where they are located they are located inside a folder called js and that's the directory i've given to them so i'm going to create some div parent div oh i don't know why i'm doing this my keyboard div so this is going to be the parent div and it's going to be having this class of container so everything is going to be having some fixed width on the web page i'm going to create some h2 i'm going to call it bootstrap model refresh so when you see some fixed width this side just know now our bootstrap is working and let's leave some gap here up 
so bootstrap introduced these new classes of mt short for margin top then dash five or six so we are leaving six pixels up oh five sorry five maximize five so that's it we are leaving some five pixels up now let's create a button here very quickly button and i'm going to call it let's say contact us so we are going to make some pop-up form contact us and when we refresh we're having a normal looking button so now let's add the new bootstrap classes they are not new they already so these are the default classes btn btn so this one is the new class outline dash success btn btn dash outline dash success and we are going to have such nice looking button so you want when the user clicks on this we display a model so first of all it's going to be having a data toggle attribute and it's going to be a model so we are telling it when they click you you'll be opening up a model so data toggle model when say data target so we are telling it at the moment they click you this is what you have to open so data target is going to go to a div having this id of my model so right now we don't have it but below here we are going to start now to create it nothing is going to change because those are attributes now let's create a div here it's going to have a class of model and fade so this is the animation we wanted to show or pop up in some fade animation then inside we are going to create another div with a class of model dialog dialog then inside that we create another div with a class of content model dash content and inside this class we're going to create another div so be following step by step first we created a div with a class of model and fed the second one is dialog model dialog and the third one is model content and inside this model content we are having another div with a class of model dash header and this way we're going to put the, our heading so let's say let's talk now to show you this let me give this an id of this my model so we are saying when they click this button hey please go up and open this dialog box here or this model so let's refresh and i click it you're going to have this heading let's talk so i guess now we are progressing let's create another div with a class or oh, let's give this one a class of model title dash title that it knows that yeah this is the title in the model then we are going to give this one a model dash body so this way we are going to put the form let me create quickly some simple form we are going to create a div and this one is going to be having form dash group then we create an input text then even if you don't put this we just put a class of form dash control let me copy this 
email so let's put placeholders let's say username placeholder email then lastly I'm going to paste this and this one is going to become a text area Oh, let's remove this and it's going to be having a placeholder a class of form control with a placeholder of message so when we refresh this page and you see this so we are having a form with a heading here now this is the parent div of the body lastly we create a div with a class of model dash footer and we are going to put here a button like submit and these are the bootstrap classes let me first save it like this and you see so this is how it is displayed now let's add some classes to this button go and say btn btn dash outline dash danger So this is how it looks like. Let me copy this button lastly. And we are going to call this one console. Let me give this one primary. guess we are good to go so let's make this when the user clicks this cancel button it closes this dialog and what you need to add only is data dash dismiss dismiss equals so what do you want to dismiss you want to dismiss the model you have to only write that and refresh and click the contact us button the moment the user clicks this cancel button it goes away Lastly, let's say you want some X button here instead of this cancel. So you just go to the header, model header. Below here, let's create a button. And we are going to put some span tag. Ampathan times. So to create that, you can write X, but let's use the HTML entities. And the type is going to be a button. And we are going to give it a class of close and the data attribute or attribute is going to be data dash dismiss and we are going to say dismiss the model so when the user clicks on this we'll see some x here so when he or she clicks it this dialog box will disappear and let me show you the importance of this class of fed let me remove fed right now and I close it you see it will just pop up no animation but when we put back the animation of fed like that refresh so it will be coming up like this so guys if this tutorial was useful to you please go ahead subscribe to the channel like the videos share them on different social medias and i'll always see you in the next tutorials so this is what we needed to write only using bootstrap if you are to write this using javascript css it will be like 50 lines of code but here we are using like 17 to 10 so guys if it was useful once again please subscribe to the channel and I will always see you in the next tutorials.
Peace.